Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on articulations, also known as joints. We're going to call joints either of these three terms based on how they move or if they don't move. The first one, synarthrosis, that's singular. So synarthroses would be those joints that are completely immovable. Sometimes when you're in utero uh, as a developing baby, you might have slight movement because they're still forming and there's still a little bit of flexibility, but by the time you're born, they're fused. Sometimes it takes you getting to uh, early adulthood by the time they're completely fused. So synarthrosis, completely immovable joint. An amphiarthrosis is kind of the middle ground. That's one of those joints that is slightly movable in certain circumstances, but not as movable as something like this. And finally, the diarthrosis, or more commonly known as synovial joints, those are the ones that are freely movable. And there's a wide variety of movements depending on what particular joint you're talking about in the body. But we'll get to those a little bit later. So we're going to start off with those uh, synarthroses, the completely immovable joints. The first one is sutures. And sutures are most obvious in the skull. Here's an image of a baby's head. And... If you could see through the baby's skin, you would see that the surface of their skull has this appearance with the sutures, um, you know, connecting all those different cranial bones. And as we mentioned before in the skeletal system lessons, you've got fontanelles. This is one of the more prominent ones, the anterior fontanelle. Uh, there's another little fontanelle here. Those are those soft spots. And one day those will be completely gone because, or they're supposed to be gone because those bones of the cranial uh, section of the skull are supposed to completely fuse. And you have those fontanelles for a couple different reasons, so that the baby can have a little bit of wiggle room when it's coming out through the birth canal, and also to accommodate that massive amount of brain growth that happens uh, in the first couple years of life. So sutures, not just in the skull, uh, they're found all throughout the body, but this is one of the classic places we would see sutures. Uh, a gumphosis, uh, the classic example for a gumphosis, and that's singular, so gumphoses would be found here. The way that all your teeth connect to the mandible and to the maxillae, uh, that connection that's not supposed to be movable is known as a gumphosis. Of course, you lose your baby teeth, but once those adult teeth come in, not supposed to be moving those. If you do have a movable uh, adult tooth, you've got a problem. Uh, a synchondrosis. Uh, synchondrosis, there's a couple different examples. It's another completely immovable joint. If you look at how rib pair one connects to the manubrium just posterior to uh, the clavicles, that's not supposed to be movable. Yes, the ribs that are more inferior, as you inhale and exhale, those costal cartilages are helping to uh, adjust that. But up at the top here, the way that rib pair one connects to the top of the sternum, not supposed to be movable. Uh, also, when you look at uh, the epiphyseal plates, for instance, here's a leg bone. This is a crude drawing of the tibia. This section, as you remember from the other lessons, if you saw them, this would be called the diaphysis. And then this section here and this section here are known as the epiphyses, or each one's an epiphysis. The way that I keep that straight is I imagine uh, a circle here, and I think of that shaft of the tibia or of the femur of whatever other long bone, that's kind of like the diameter of the circle. So diameter, diaphysis, and epi can mean like above or outside on the uh, exterior portion. So the epiphysis and epiphysis here, both of them are outside of the circle. But I'm digressing a little bit. The epiphyseal plates, you would find this uh, band of, of soft bone or cartilage as the bone develops, as it grows, and as it hardens. The epiph epiph epiphyseal plates are going to eventually get to their maximum distance from each other. So epiphyseal plates up here, epiphyseal plate down here. And once the bone is fully grown, it's stopped. So you can think of that finalized epiphyseal plate that's no longer moving as being another example of a connection between one part of a bone, the epiphysis, and the other part of the bone, the diaphysis, that's not supposed to be movable anymore. 
And uh, finally, a synostosis is when you have, let's say, this bone and this bone, the two sides of the frontal bone fusing. In an adult, you would no longer see that suture. Uh, it's not obvious. When you look at a frontal bone, that suture is gone. Uh, so this fuses very early on, and you could call that a synostosis. The other sutures that are more visible in an adult, slightly different.